Moving on now, we're also being joined by Harsh Vipan from New Delhi. Harsh is a professor of international relations with King's India Institute at King's College London. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. Hello. Now, I'd ask this question to my colleague as well, and I'm asking you the same. Do you think India has a difficult balancing act here? Uh, yes, I would think it's a, it's a difficult balancing act because uh, clearly the fault lines are getting very, very polarized. And uh, uh, we have seen that in the, foreign, in the finance minister's meeting uh, where China and Russia versus the rest was became the predominant uh, fault line. And I think this is likely to continue. So India's uh, uh, response to that would determine the outcome of, of uh, the foreign minister's meeting as well as the larger G20 agenda. And I think and that's where uh, perhaps there are a lot of expectations from India as well, because India is one of the few countries uh, that has access to all of these countries, direct line to most of the stakeholders in this conversation. But it is indeed a very difficult balancing act. Right, absolutely. In fact, I was just going to come to this. Even though the Russia-Ukraine war is likely to dominate talks here, what role, how do you assess the role of India as the head of G20? Uh, I think India has a very important uh, uh, you know, role at the moment, in particular because you have the multilateral institutions, uh, all of them are dysfunctional. There is no uh, you know, global governance agenda on the table. And for India, I think, therefore, the, uh, what India has done uh, somewhat uh, with great finesse is to articulate an agenda that talks about the global south about the developing world. And therefore, uh, once you start talking about the food crisis, fuel crisis, economic crisis that is wreaking havoc on the developing world, some of the poorest and the most vulnerable countries around the world, you can perhaps smoothen some of the edges out from the from the Russia, uh, you know, uh, Ukraine contestation or Russia West contestation, and perhaps can bring uh, all the stakeholders together across a table, around a table, to address some of these very, very important, almost existential challenges for a large part of the world, which perhaps no one else is talking about. Right, absolutely. And just for more clarity here, speaking of the larger G20 agenda here, what are some of the positions and issues that are likely to come up? Well, India has, for example, uh, as I was discussing, taken up the you know this this agenda very very vocally and and publicly uh, about the developing countries and and their economic uh, distress at this particular point in time. And for a platform like G20, which was created to address economic problems, uh, it would be um, uh, you know damaging if if this if this issue is not really addressed frontally. But there are other issues on the table: sustainable development, environmental issues. There are there are issues pertaining to uh, you know digitization, digital economy and the future of work that, that India brings to the table. And of course, there is this issue of the reformed multilateralism. How do you take forward this, this discussion and debate on various organizations in the world today that reflect a certain balance of power post-1945, which no longer exists? So how do you move forward on all of these issues? It's a very, very diverse and very, very varied agenda. But India has said that it wants it to be a decisive presidency. It wants to be an action-oriented presidency. So I think that the onus is now on India and on other stakeholders to deliver. Right. And Mr. Harsh Vipan, thank you so much for joining us in this on this podcast with all your insights on this. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.